Hey guys, it is Brido here, and welcome back to our Liverpool Career Mode series. This is episode 10, and in today's episode, we have a couple games for you guys, starting up against West Ham away from home, and then moving on to a game against Aston Villa at Anfield. Then we go on to our squad report to see how our players are doing. In the meantime, we'll also be talking about potential uh, transfer targets as the transfer deadline looms at this point. So starting up, though, we're playing a game here against West Ham away from home, so... A tough matchup in a way, but at the same time, a, a game that we're really expecting to get three points from. We're starting some of our younger players in this one. Yeshel getting the start up front. There you can see Andy Carroll once again. We're facing up against him. Still on loan at West Ham. He's been doing quite good for them. And obviously, when we uh, met up against him uh, in the League Cup, we did have a little bit of troubles uh, in that real crazy game that ended up being 4-2. This one, though, we tried to keep things a little bit more simple, tried to uh, play good defensively and not give them opportunities such as this. But right away, we do give them a nice uh, free kick chance there. But they really squander it as it goes right towards Leno at that point. And we get a really weird opportunity here. We actually kick it so far that Yeshel gets a chance here. But he doesn't take the chance that well, unfortunately. And that leads to still the game being tied at this point. But we did start Steven Gerrard in this game, so we had a good little bit of a offensive help from him. And Yeshel was playing quite well. With uh, some good opportunities to start off the game. Trying to test the West Ham goalkeeper there. Uh, now we uh, get another opportunity here. John Joe Shelby with the shot. And a nice save by Yaskalane in there. Uh, a good chance for us once again. But still another uh, chance saved by the West Ham keeper. There you can see us taking the corner. Not a, a great opportunity. But from the first half we really did control most of the play. And got most of the opportunities. Which was a nice feeling. Uh, our game against West Ham previously was a tight affair. But at the same time, too, it was a goal affair, and this was a little bit of a better feeling. Even though we wanted to score some goals, it was nice knowing as well that we were able to control the game and handle the game at a good pace. There you can see we controlled most of the possession, and as well, they didn't even have a shot on net uh, or on goal uh, in the first half. So a, a good start for us, and uh, we were really, like I said, controlling most of the play up until this point. For us, starting off the second half, though, a quick chance here for... West Ham to feed the ball right over to uh, Andy Carroll. Takes the shot, but it's blocked uh, there by John Joe Shelby. And, uh, yeah, around the 60-second mark, we get our own first uh, opportunity of the half. Is Steven Gerrard's cutting around here. Comes in, tries to take the shot off, but it just goes wide. Moving ahead to the 80th minute here, we get an opportunity for ourselves. Zalabas playing up field. He passes it over to Sterling. Sterling takes his time. Sees Yeshua with a little bit of space. He takes the off-balance shot. Scores the goal. And the 81st minute, we finally find the back of the net. And there's a nice one for us because we really needed a, the three points in this one. We felt like we were dominating and it was getting close to being a, a nil-nil draw. So we got a couple more opportunities though. As this game winds down, we're trying to find the insurance. And here's a real nice one from Nuri Shaheen. He gets an opportunity, cuts in on the defender, takes his time, takes the shot, and just puts it wide. Uh, we got one more on top of that as well as Steven Gerrard finds Raheem Sterling. He uses his speed on the wing to create a little bit of space for the midfielders. Cuts back in, finds Gerrard once again, plenty of space. Puts that one right past Jaskalainen. And a goal for us once again, getting us two goals in the last 10 minutes of the game. And giving us the lead at the end of this one. So a very uh, you know tight game overall. We did control most of the play, but it looked like it could uh, pedal out to being a draw. In the end though, we do get the three points and the two goals out of this game. So a good win for us, a little bit uh, late on, but still a nice one overall. And you can see Raheem Sterling there with a 9.8 rating. A great game from him, and he gets the man of the match award in this one. And once again, like I said, possession controlled and shots from us were the main benefactors in this game. And uh, yeah, we were overall pretty happy with this one. Is by uh, winning this game, we actually moved surprisingly to the top of the table, which is a little bit uh, surprising. Chelsea um, with a game in hand so they can uh, bounce back against us. But at this point, that's definitely a nice thing to see that we've been able to claw our ways up to that point. But the standings are quite close and uh, anything can happen at this point. And uh, we move on, though, to our next game, and that's against Aston Villa here at home. And they've been on quite a good streak. They're around middle of the table side. And they run a 4-1 or 4-3-1-2 there versus our team that we're starting a quite a strong one for this game. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit while this game's starting up essentially about uh, possible transfers once again. I've gotten all your feedback and I'm going through, you know, teams and whatnot. I'm really only looking at bringing in that striker for, you know, 10, 15 or so uh, million pounds in the transfer deadline. Other spots we do need to fill in the future, but that's going to be something that we'll look at in the offseason for the time being. What we're going to look at for the January transfer window is finding that extra player to play down the middle. 
We already have some good players overall up front, but I think adding one more would be definitely a positive for the team. You know, Luis Suarez coming back will be a definite uh, positive for us down the middle as our striker, but, you know, having another guy as well that can play that role will be a positive. And then, you know, in the cases that we're trying to be aspiring for a Champions League spot, you know, we don't want Luis Suarez playing 40 games in that position all year. We don't want to tire him out, nor do we want to see him get injured once again. So uh, adding an extra player to that role will definitely be uh, a boon for our chances of doing well and uh, this season and moving forward. And I think that our wings are already quite solid. And if we, you know, Brini is a striker uh, naturally, but he can also play the wings too as his alternate position. And having him on the wing seems like a better choice than being a striker. I like that a little bit of a taller player, a little bit overall of a player that has the, the talent. I really like having the best player being that striker because it seems like they you know, really can pull games out that you aren't, you know, winning, you aren't doing a good job in. And so bringing in that type of player is definitely going to be a positive for us if we can do that. It's just a matter of who it's going to be and uh, how much it's going to cost. So uh, you can see here, though, uh, during the game, it was a back and forth action to start this one off. And Darren Bent scores the goal of the 25th minute. It's a deflected shot. Bern Leno didn't have a chance on it, unfortunately. It's the first real mishap goal that we've had this uh, season, which is quite lucky, actually, because we've been doing... Uh, pretty good in that department, but it still leaves us plenty of time to see if we can come back in this one. There's a nice chance on the volley for Joe Allen, but he's able not to really do much of it as it goes straight towards the Aston Villa keeper. And going into the second half, the game is still 1-0 in Aston Villa's favor. So uh, moving into the second half here, we hopefully are going to try and pull this one uh, back to a winning favor. The game is quite close. We had a little bit more of the shot uh, chances, but at the same time, too, the possession was quite even at this point. Moving ahead to the second half here, we get a chance for Raheem Sterling in the middle, takes a shot off the goalkeeper and the post, so unfortunately that one doesn't go our way there, but we keep the opportunities going, keep the chances coming for Liverpool at this point. Moving the ball around nicely here as Yeshel is able to get it, uh, cuts in, tries to find some space to someone that's inside the box, finds Joe Allen who's able to cut in, takes a shot and puts that one calmly past the Aston Villa goalkeeper. Getting us a tie game at this point at the 65th minute. With the game tied 1-1, we're still not going to sit back as we bring on Barini. A little bit more of an experienced uh, player up front. Trying to keep the game going in our favor and trying to get the three points instead of sitting back on a draw. And there's a chance for Barini a couple minutes into his uh, game after coming off the bench. Uh, a nice chance, but he probably should have done more of it as there's plenty of players to pass to there. But he waited a little bit too long and that led to just a block shot by the Aston Villa player. Off the corner though, Jordan Henderson gets a shot on net. It's right at the goalkeeper though, so not too hard for him to handle. At the 80th minute though, we get another opportunity for ourselves as Raheem Sterling moving the ball around, finds Barini in the box. He passes it to Allen. He takes a shot and off the shot, a Sadie, ah, just so close and it. it's off the goalkeeper and the bar. Thought that was going to be the, the winning goal there, but at this point the game is still tied. Steven Gerrard on the corner, tries to put one into the box nice and calmly. And it falls right to Barini who has a chance to shoot. But it's just deflected off the Aston Villa player. And that one falls to nothing at that point. Now into the 85th minute here. A chance for Aston Villa as the game's uh, dying down at this point. They cross one all the way over to, I believe it's Burke right here. Completely open with plenty of space. We try and cut away on the shot. Trying to block it. But unfortunately, he's left all alone to put that one calmly past uh, Leno there. And that leads to us now being down with about 6 minutes left in the game. Right from the center circle, though, we go on the offense of bringing the ball back up towards the net of Aston Villa. And a give-and-go turns right back to Brini, who takes the shot and scores. A crazy turn of events once again. Brini scores right after the Aston Villa goal, and the game is now tied at 2-2. I didn't believe it at the time. Once again, going quite crazy at this point. A little bit of luck there as the bounce, ball bounced off the Aston Villa player after the give-and-go. But we still take it as Barini calmly puts that one away. And uh, we're quite lucky at this point because I could have sworn it was going to be a, a loss for us and no points from this game. We, uh, As the game closes out, we get one more opportunity here as the ball falls to Allen. He tries to cut in and take the shot, but it gets blocked and cleared by Steven Ireland there. So the game does end at a 2-2 draw, but we'll gladly take this one because it was a great game. One of my favorite games of the season thus far. Plenty of action and overall a crazy amount of uh, goals going both ways and a, a lucky flurry finish there as well. You can see the chances. We had an amazing amount of shots in this game, but it really the, the goalkeeper from Aston Villa did a great job in this one. On another day, the score might have been different, guys, but we'll gladly accept the draw on this one with Barini uh, stealing a point for us late on in this game. 
With that said though, we'll end up this episode at this point and I'll leave you guys with the squad report so you can see how our guys are developing. And you can also see here on the right side a quick little look at the standings. You can see that we're tied for first at this point with Chelsea with a game in hand. Still though, we're up top which is a, a nice feeling at this point. Hopefully we can keep the ball uh, rolling in our favor and keep the good times going. Thanks guys uh, for watching this episode and uh, stay tuned for more in the near future. Cheers.